peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we're going to be talking about giving you guys a little bit of homework for this next uh, study that might be a one or two part study. It's up to the Lord and how long it is. Um, but I want to start it out before we get into it. I want to start out with singing a hymn again, if it's okay. Um, it is well with my soul. We've sung this before. If you want to look it up, I still like this hymn. It's one of my favorites because it has to do with no matter what's going on in this world today, it is well with my soul. No matter the condition of the body of Christ is, it is well with my soul. I pray it's well with your soul, brothers of Christ. No matter what's going on in this wicked world and the distractions of the world, it's well with my soul because I'm not getting distracted by the world. I'm staying focused on my looking for Jesus Christ, that blessed hope. Putting on the whole armor of God, the armor of light, being a living witness and a verbal witness. We've been talking about this, you know, true biblical salvation, being a living witness and a verbal witness in these last days, staying in the Word of God, hiding it in your heart and living it. It is well with my soul. Right? It's oftentimes also when you're looking it up, uh, sometimes you have to look it up as when peace like a river. Okay? I'm noticing that some of these hymns they have two names. You can look it up under two different titles. But little tired today, it's a little hot today, but I wanted to get this out. I want to get this out. Right. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught, me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul though satan should buffet Though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well 
with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. O Lord, haste the day when my face shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall appear. Even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Brother says, Christ, I pray that it is well with your soul. Once again, Brother says, Christ, that you're staying in God's Word. You're staying in prayer. You have a strong, healthy prayer life. You have a strong, healthy Bible reading life. I've always said this. Start your day with the Word of God. End your day with the Word of God. And I have to correct myself sometimes. Start the day with prayer and the Word of God. You can talk to the Lord and pray with the Lord as you're reading the Word of God. Lord, what does this mean? How does this apply to my life? Oh, this reminds me of this over here, Lord. Thank you for sharing this over here. Lord, start talking to the Lord about your day. How are we gonna, how's today going to be, Lord? What do you have for me today? This is what I'd like to do, Lord. You know, if it be thy will, that kind of attitude, Lord. And you need to have a strong prayer life and a strong Bible reading life. Always looking for that blessed hope. Oh, Lord, haste the day when my face shall be sight. It's talking about the blessed hope. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The day of Christ. The day of redemption. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. Make sure you're looking for that blessed hope. And the mindset, the Word of God, you're meditating on the Word of God night and day because you're thinking of that judgment seat of Christ. There's a day we're going to see Jesus Christ face to face. There is coming a day. Okay? And right now we're getting distracted. We're getting distracted by the world. And I want to give you some homework. For this next study that I want to do, it's going to be a study where if I go through and read out every verse, it's going to be a fit, it might be like a 50 part study, exaggeration, you know. It's going to be a, like, and I'm not against multi part studies. In, in the future, we might really get into this a little bit more in depth. But um, we're going to be talking about Na da Noah. The next study we're going to be putting out is Noah, Daniel, Job, and Enoch. What they mean to me. Okay? And this is a study that I'm going to be putting out, and I'm going to put you out what God put on my heart, and I'd love to get from the brethren what God has shown you when it comes to this. But what's, what provoked this is Ezekiel 14.14. 14. So if you want to turn to Ezekiel 14.14. 14. Ezekiel 14.14. 14. And right here. Ezekiel 14.14. 14. While you're turning there, the time of Jacob's trouble, because some brothers still ask, how do you get seven years in the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. it, is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. That's where we get the time of Jacob's trouble for that seven-year time period that's coming up. But how do we get seven years? Daniel 9, 24. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in, bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecies, and to anoint the most holy. What this is talking about is, is when Neb God allowed Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar to come in at the end of uh, uh, 2 Kings, okay, it ends uh, with Nebuchadnezzar coming in and taking the Jews into bondage, and eventually destroying the city, the, the gates, and destroying the temple. And that's where you have Ezra's rebuilding. They come back to the land, taking them out of the land. They come back to the land in Ezra, and they rebuild the temple in Ezra. Then they rebuild the walls, the gates, because of the prophecies of Jesus Christ coming in. Okay? But that, at the end of the 70 years where they were in bondage, this is where Daniel is getting this. And... Um, so Daniel, he's telling Daniel's, okay, 70 weeks, and each week is seven years, okay? And we have a whole study on this. And I put up, Brother did an even better study than me. I put a Brother study out that's on this channel talking about Daniel's 70th week. How do we get that? What does it mean? 
and he does a really good job, but each week is seven years, and 69 weeks were accounted for from when, Je from when they came back in Ezra, when they came back in Ezra, to when Jesus came back with 69 weeks, uh, I believe up to his death, when they crucified him. All right? 69 weeks have been accounted for. That 70th week hasn't been counted for. And like I said, in that study, he talks about how why each week is seven days. A week is seven days. Daniel's 70th week. Each week is seven days, and each day represents a year. So, you know, they do all the math and everything. They say, okay, up to Jesus' death is 69 weeks, and then the kingdom of heaven gospel got put off, and the 70th week hasn't happened yet. Now, be careful. I've called it Daniel's 70th week. That 70-year time period is not called Daniel's 70th week. It's just, in a description, you can say that 70th week hasn't been accounted for, and, we're, the, and the Jews are still waiting for that 70th week to fulfill what we, we just read there in Daniel 9.24. Okay? So that's how you get the, ti the, the title for the time period, Daniel's 70th week. It's not the Great Tribulation. That's a false title. Okay? And it's meant to do away with the time of Jacob's trouble. They don't like the title, Time of Jacob's Trouble. Because in the time of Jacob's trouble, God goes back to dealing with the Jewish people. The Kingdom of Heaven gospel comes back. All right? And that time period, the body of Christ isn't there. And when they change, it's a whole other study. They change the title. You'll notice that they change a lot in this book because they're trying to mess with this book. And they're trying to mess with what God's actually teaching, what God's actually saying. So Time of Jacob's Trouble, seven years. Now Ezekiel 14.14, 14, here's the homework. Ezekiel 14.14. 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, in it, what? Each one of these men were a type of where God is allowing bad things to happen, whether he's doing judgment, he's pouring out his wrath, some kind of judgment. He's allowing bad things, hardship to happen down here. And there's people going through it. But I also believe when it's talking about we're in it, because I just talked about it, I believe it's taught, prophesying the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord. Well, that right there just debunks the false teaching that it's faith alone from Genesis to Revelation. It's faith alone. No, it says here, they were in it, they should deliver but their own souls, they got to save themselves, by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. So in the time of Jacob's trouble, it's not, faith, it's not through faith only. They're not justified by faith. They're justified by the righteous. They're justified by works. That's in the book of James. They're justified by their works, and there's faith on the side. But even if this is you're saying, this is just Old Testament. This is just when uh, Noah, Daniel, and Job, then back in the Old Testament, they had to save themselves by works. Uh-oh. No, no, no. It, it's faith. Don't fall for that garbage. The only time that we're saved by God's grace through faith and that not of ourselves is the gift of God, not of works, going through the Levitical laws, not of works, the laws of Moses, you know, circumcision, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are created in Christ Jesus, that's before and day, uh, we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works that have bore, before been ordained, that we should walk in them. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. That's just for today. Only today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, only in this dispensation, are we justified by just faith. There's works on the side to prove our faith. There's works on the side to prove ourselves, as Paul said. Check whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. But we're justified by faith. But these three men, they're justified by their own righteousness. They're justified by their works. Jump down to... Nine, uh, was it uh, Ezekiel fourteen twenty? So go down two, two verses down to twenty. It says, "Though Noah and Daniel and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall be but deliver their own souls by their righteousness." Now, if you remember the story, we're not going to go into it too much because we're going to do it when the study comes. This is just. But if you remember the story of Job, he would do animal sacrifices for his children, thinking that, you know, perhaps they cursed God in their hearts. But in that time of Jacob's trouble, it's every man for himself. 
uh, when Jesus said, I came not to bring peace, but a sword, he's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. That time period he was in, when he was physically there preaching the kingdom of heaven, and the time of Jacob's trouble. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. To set a man at variance against his father, and a mother, uh, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. And we'll get into that a little bit more when we actually do the study. But you see here, they deliver their own souls. Each person is responsible for their individual work, and it's their own righteousness. Deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Right now, today, brothers, says Christ, I'm saved, and Jesus' righteousness is imputed to me. I'm saved by Jesus' righteousness. I'm saved by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in these time period, they have to have their own righteousness. And Revelation is talking about them washing their own robes. So, you say, well, wait a second, um, something's missing here. Where is Enoch? What about Enoch? Well, we're going to get into Enoch in this study at the end because Enoch's the important one. Not these three men, Enoch's the important one. But we're going to go through all of it. So the homework that I'm going to be giving you, brothers and Christ, is read up on Noah, the whole story of Noah and what he had to go through. Uh, read up on Daniel, mainly the, what he had to go through. You don't have to get into all the dreams and everything, but read a little bit because it's going to be in here and the su subject a little bit, subject a little bit. But read up on Daniel mainly what he had to go through to be faithful to God, with him being in bondage and in mystery Babylon. <laughs> you know, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you know, the Babylon religion and everything. What he had to go through, and then read up on Job. You don't have to read the whole thing of Job, but read at the very beginning what he had to go through, what was he was being tested with to see if he will turn his back on God. Okay, what's being taken from him to get him to, take, to turn his back on God. Okay. And then read up on Enoch, who Enoch is. Okay, Enoch's probably the shortest, quickest read, because there's very little on Enoch. But the Bible talks about Enoch walking with God and he got caught up. Okay. Um, spoiler alert. <laughs> Enoch, it, it represents the church. But we're going to go through and talk about these types of men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, and what I believe they represent in the time of Jacob's trouble. And then we're going to talk about Enoch, what we're supposed to be focused on. So this is the homework I'm giving you, brothers and Christ. Read up on Noah, Daniel, Job, and Enoch. Those four people. Because okay? we're going to be going through it, and I'm going to, be, I'm going to try to paraphrase. I'm going to be trying to just read the... I'll still give the scriptures, but there's so much, so I'll just kind of like tell the story a little bit. And then we're going to go in and start comparing the time of Jacob's trouble to these three men and how Enoch has nothing to do with the time of Jacob's trouble. And our focus is supposed to be on that blessed hope. So this is the homework that I'm trying to give you, Brother Sis Christ. I left this stuff out too because I want to mention, I've got, uh, this is post office stuff. <laughs> um, I, I get requests every once in a while for Bibles, so I wanted to throw that out there. So this to the side, this is your homework. Please, Brother Sis Christ, take some time in the next week. I'll try to put it out this Saturday, but if God puts on my heart and says, hey, you know what, give them another week, you know, it'll either be this Saturday we're going to be putting out the study, or the following Saturday we're going to be putting out the study. Um, I've been putting it together for a while. But please, read up on these men so you know about these men and what they went through in their story, okay? Because we're going to start talking about Ezekiel 14.14 14 and Ezekiel 14.20, and we're going to start comparing it to the time of Jacob's trouble and why the body of Christ doesn't go through the time of Jacob's trouble. That there should be enough. Okay? They shall but deliver their own souls by their own righteousness. No, I'm delivered by Jesus Christ's righteousness. It's His righteousness that saves me. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, it's their own righteousness. There's works in the time of Jacob's trouble. They have to keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There's works involved. But you still, like I said, <laughs> if you love the truth, then they're going to want the truth. But if somebody doesn't want the truth, then they don't want the truth. But back to this. Uh, Bibles, Brother Says Christ. If you want Bibles like these, if you want some good Bibles, let me know. If you need uh, like some of the cheap Bibles, like 20 of them for what you're doing, uh, witnessing, wanting to hand them out. Some, if you need King James Bibles or want some King James Bibles, hit up this ministry. That's one of the things we've been doing a lot lately in the last year, year to two years. Uh, been trying to get Bibles to those who want Bibles. Okay? Um, 
So I just want to throw that out there again. Okay? If you want some King James Bibles? Hit me up. Okay? And I, I, the Lord has blessed me with being able to get King James Bibles for people. I think, uh, just to remind you to keep gospel tracting, Brother Jesus Christ, but keep being a living witness and a verbal witness. And I think that's it for this short video. Okay? So I'm going to end it with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Get your homework assignment. Get into those four men and learn as much as you can about them and their story and get it fresh in your hearts. And like I said, I really want to try to get it out this Saturday, but it might be the following Saturday. But I really want to try to do it this Saturday. So I'll see you guys in the next video.